Hello my friends, welcome to my corner. If you really want to know a person, ask them what they read. Or better yet, if you get the chance, look at their bookshelves. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to give you a little tour of one of my bookshelves, so that you can see a little bit more what kind of reader I am. I have many bookshelves here, as you can imagine, but I chose one of them. And that's what we are going to focus on, just one of my many bookshelves. I'm going to keep this brief because the video itself, the bookshelf tour itself, is rather long already. But before we begin, I did want to recommend to you two channels that were a great source of inspiration to me specifically when I put together this video. The first channel that I want to recommend to you is called Literature News. And it's run by a young man by the name of Toralf. He has a wonderful collection of videos on all sorts of books, from Stephen King to Vladimir Nabokov, but covering all sorts of authors. Uh, Nut Hamsun, I remember watching a video on him, Herman Hesse, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, lots of different authors. And he has just brilliant ideas about these books and these authors, but also great enthusiasm when he, you know, describes his readings and all sorts of things, really. The other channel that I wanted to recommend to you is titled Echoes of Lost Libraries. Echo is from Norway and he has the library that I and you and pretty much everybody would love to have. He has just a wonderful collection, so many books and a really beautiful space where he has them. You know, that's something that I wish I had, because in my case there are books all over the place. I don't really have one nice space to put my books in. I have books in my bookshelves, there are books under the bed, in my writing desk, in the office, they're all over the place. The refrigerator is pretty much the only place where I don't have books right now. So, uh, check out Literature News and also Echoes of Lost Libraries. I have included the links in the description to this video, and I won't say I hope you enjoy them because I am sure that you will. Without further ado, let's look at one of my bookshelves, and I hope you enjoy the contents of it. Okay, my friends, so here we are. This is the bookshelf that I chose to share with you. And there are 45 books visible on the shelf, but there are also many, many more behind these books. So um, I think probably we have, we're looking at something between 80 and 100 books. So let me take care of the books that are on top of the other books there first. So this is a collection of short stories by Arthur Clarke, selected by the author. I think it was two or three years ago I realized that I had not read a lot of sci-fi and I decided to fill in that space and of course Arthur Clarke was one of the mandatory authors. I read Childhood's End by him and I really liked it and I meant to explore some of his short stories too but I never got around to that. I still need to read this book also part of that project is this one, which I also have not read. Many of the books that you see here I need to read, that's why I have them close at hand. Sometimes the books that are behind are the ones that I have read. I don't know if you've seen the movie Soylent Green with uh, Charlton Heston. Well, this is the novel that that movie is based on. And then this is a very... Um, it's the kind of book that not many people have heard of. I had to get this one in French because it was not available in Spanish or in English, which are the main languages that I read in. Being able to read in French has helped me a lot, so I was really happy to find this one. And I'm a big fan of Japanese literature. And um, Inoue Yasushi wrote this novel, Asunaro. I found about it through the animated classics of Japanese literature and uh, I decided to read it because of that and uh, I really really liked it even it's it's not a well-known book but I really enjoyed it then what I have here is as you can see this is obvious I have a guide of 500 essential anime uh, movies I got this one at half price books I, I found it there and it has been very helpful it gave me a lot of ideas when it comes to um, anime and what movies to look for and going with that topic also of course I have one of the best anime movies ever which is of course Akira one of my favorites then uh, let's see what is this this is just a notebook um, showing the uh, Garden of Earthly Delights so no, not really a book but I just put it there I have a collection of stories by Ambrose Beers 
I also need to read this. Then, uh, of course, Thomas Pinchon. I also need to read this one. I started reading it um, on, a, on a road trip, I think. I could not concentrate very well, so I still have this to look forward to. I have read this one, and you have probably heard of it, and you probably recognize the cover from the movie by Andrei Tarkovsky, Stalker. So this is the base material for um, that film, and it, it is really a very, very enjoyable read, also part of my sci-fi project. And then um, I have other books on top here, which you cannot see, but I'm going to show them to you. I have Huxley's The Doors of Perception. This edition is from the UK, and it comes also with the book, uh, also a short book, titled Heaven and Hell. So you have those two works in this one. And another book that I need to read and that I'm saving for last, because I think it is one of the best, by Don DeLillo, one, one of my favorite authors who I think deserves the Nobel Prize. If there is an American author who deserves the Nobel Prize, uh, Dalilo is, is him, you know? So I'm um, looking forward to reading this one. So let's look at the ones that we can actually see here. The first one, this green one, is The Anatomy of Melancholy by Robert Burton. And I always have to check myself there to make sure that I'm not gonna say Richard Burton, but no, it's Robert Burton, The Anatomy of melancholy. Then uh, this is a collection of tales by Kenji Miyasawa, so more on my um, interest for Japanese literature. Brooklyn by Colin Tobin is one of my favorite novels really, especially in the from, from the last few years. I usually make a point of not getting books that feature the movie cover in the uh, or, or scenes from the movie in the cover, but sometimes there's there's no choice and I do that. Pinchon's V, I still think this is Thomas Pinchon's best novel. Is it okay to say that? I mean, I, I don't hear many people saying that they prefer V from the Pinchon corpus, but I loved it. It was the first one that I read. I went chronologically with his work, or maybe I read The Crying of Lot. I can't remember really, but it was one of the first that I read. And I still think it's... I enjoyed it a lot more than Gravity's Rainbow. Um, I still have to read Mason and Dixon, Against the Day, and as I just told you, Bleeding Edge. The others I have read, but I, I think V is the one that I enjoyed the most. Then this is a nice edition um, by Penguin of Charles Dickens' Bleak House. It's an amazing novel, his longest, I believe, or, you know, it's, it's close there. And it requires quite a bit of time, so you have to be willing to spend quite a few days with it. At least I have, I'm a very slow reader, but it really is worth the effort. Then this that you see here is a collection of Japanese novellas in French. So uh, another example of, you know, a book that I'm really happy to have and to be able to read, even though it takes me a very long time to read in French because it's, I guess, my third language. I cannot speak it. I can read, but it takes me a while. And you can see some of the authors who are featured here. Uh, we have Dasai, Ishihara, Oe, Ogawa, Maruyama, and many others. So I thought it was interesting because I have not read most of these and uh, I love novellas. So that's another thing that I guess uh, this bookshelf reflects. About Looking by John Berger. I like books that look at art and um, the ways of, of reading the world around us, like the visuals and all the things that we see. So this is a good collection of essays by him. And then I have Works of Love by Kierkegaard. Um, which I have not read. Kierkegaard is one of my favorite philosophers and I identify with him a lot, this idea of the individual and the uh, via solitaria, if you want to call it that. All of that really, really appeals to me. This is a good sociological study that I read about in another book. I can't remember which one. It's a classic, The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life. I enjoyed it. It's, I can't remember when it was published. It's been a while since this one came out. The copyright says 1959, but I felt it was still relevant. 
I still need to read Mother London by Michael Moorcock, so more on my interest for sci-fi and my, you know, desire to catch up with that. Then I have Barabbas by Lagerquist. This is a replacement. I s it still has the, uh, the price tag. It's a replacement copy. I uh, let somebody borrow this book and they never returned it. So uh, I, I, have, I have a rule here. You know, I never or almost never let people borrow my books because I have gotten burned many times doing that. But sometimes I still do. And in the end, most of the time, I regret it. Some major works by Wittgenstein. This one has um, the Tractatus, the Blue and Brown books, and uh, Studies for Philosophical Investigations. Many um, his major works really are included here. So I thought it was a nice book to have, but I also need to read that. Then I have read, I am happy to say, Kafka's The Castle and also America. I think I have notes actually from my reading of those books, enough notes to sort of put together a video, so I'm looking forward to doing that, hopefully one of these days. I have Journey to the End of the Night by Louis Ferdinand Céline, which I really enjoyed reading. It took me a while, even though the prose is very easy to follow, and the translation in English is a very good one. I can't remember who did the translation. Yeah, Ralph Mannheim, so he's one of the, um, one of the more famous translators of uh, works from French. And the arrangement here also tells you a little bit about the kind of reading that I do. So you have uh, Celine's Journey to the End of the Night right next to Sigrid Unset's biography of Saint Catherine of Siena. So you can see, I, I, I like to think that I'm all over the place. I think that's a good thing to be, especially when you're talking about reading. This is one of the most beautiful books I have ever read. The Poetics of Space by Gaston Bachelard. Uh, on how to, if somebody asked me what is this book about, I would say, well, it's about reading the world around us, and I, I highly recommend it. You can see just a little bit more of my interest for Japanese literature with Spring Snow, which is the first part of the Sea of Fertility tetralogy by Yukio Mishima. Then uh, I have The Unconsoled, by Ishiguro, which I have not read. I've read many, I think most of his books. Uh, Never Let Me Go, The Remains of the Day, A Pale View of Hills, uh, what's the other one? The, An Artist of the Floating World, but I still need to read The Unconsoled, and I do need to catch up with the latest books that he has published, like The Very Giant, Clara and the Sun, I, I need to, to do that. And as I mentioned in one of my other videos, one of my absolute favorite novels ever, the Tin Drum by Gunther Grass. It's amazing. It's just fantastic, this novel. I have read, um, I think, one other book by him, Cat and Mouse, but I, I think The Tin Drum is, you know, most people will tell you it's his masterpiece, and it's very difficult to think, you know, of another book that would top that. And then I have two books by Albert Camus, this collection of essays, Resistance, Rebellion, and Death, and of course, The Rebel, which is this, you know, book-length essay that, that I also need to read. I started it a few times, but it's, I, I want to be able to concentrate with that one. Let me move this a little bit more so you can see the rest of the shelf here. The body artist, once again, Don DeLillo, but also my love for novellas. This book also has its price tag still, also from Half Price Books. I think this should be mandatory reading for everybody who's interested in love, in you know, making love work in, in real life. Many people will find it cliche. This is a book that a certain generation, you know, if you talk to people of a certain age, everybody had read it, but I, you know, I read it after going through a breakup and I was like, wow, I wish I had read this before. It would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of unnecessary heartbreak. This is one of the, one of the best uh, novels, I think, from the uh, from recent years. I have not read any other novels or books by Julian Barnes, though I do have a copy of Arthur and George somewhere, but I still need to read that. Read that. And uh, George Saunders is also one favorite of mine.
from contemporary authors, and I have Pastoralia and Civil War Land in Bad Decline. I think Civil War Land is uh, my favorite. Once again, I don't know if it's okay to say that it's his first collection of short stories, so um, most people like his later work, but I really enjoyed that one. It's hilarious. It really made me laugh a lot. I, uh, from a previous video, you probably know if you've seen it, that I um, challenged myself in the year 2003, I want to say, to read at least one work by each winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature. It took me 13 years to complete that reading project, but much of what you see here responds to that little challenge that I uh, decided to embark upon. J.G. Ballard, another favorite of mine, and this I think was, uh, I'm trying not to get the light in the camera, this I think it was one, one of my uh, favorite novels by him. I really liked The Atrocity Exhibition, The Unlimited Dream Company also was another favorite, but um, Concrete Island is short, so it's manageable, and it's a, it's a really nice read. I really like these editions by the Modern Library. Most of them are not in print anymore. These, I think, they were selling back in the back in in the 2000s, in the early 2000s. So I have the City of God by uh, Saint Augustine, which I read, I think, a couple of years ago or last year during one long summer. I had time enough to dedicate to it, and I I really you know it's one it's a book that really takes you uh, takes you someplace else. Let's put it that way. Then the immortal novel Moby Dick, which you also need to, you know, put aside a summer to <laughs> read that. And I think of course the same could be say of could be said of Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov, which is, you know, one of the monuments of world literature. I have two books here from the I think this is the University of California Press. I shared this one in one of uh, a book haul that I uh, did maybe a couple of months ago the Transcendental Style in Film by Paul Schrader, and another book akin to The Poetics of Space, The Practice of Everyday Life by Michel de Sarto, another book that helps us to, I guess, enjoy uh, the world around us a little bit more. It's a challenging read. It's a bit of a, you know, too theoretic from, from my taste at times, but I dedicate time to it and, you know, I, um, I enjoy it when I do that. And more on my interest for Nobel Prize winners, this uh, collection of poems by Szymborska, which is very, very good. And the last one that I have visible on the shelf here is um, William Golding's Egyptian journal. Like so many people all around the world, I had to read The uh, Lord of the Flies in high school. And at one point I decided to look for more information about the author and I read about his other works. I read about, you know, Free Fall, The Inheritors, Fincher Martin, The Spire, all of those, and I was like, wow, this sounds interesting. I would like to read that too. And I started to read his books and uh, I still need to read this one though. So those are the visible books. Now uh, let me move all this stuff, so I'm going to take a minute to do that and then we can look at the books then are behind these. Okay, there we go. Uh, thank you for your patience, if you're still here. And uh, these are the books that I found behind. Um, we're we're going to see what we have here, because it's been a while since I looked at these. Penelope Fitzgerald, and once again, the fact that these books are behind doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean I'm trying to hide them or anything, or that I did not like them. It just means that most of the time it means I have read them, so that's a good thing. This was not one of my favorite Penelope Fitzgerald books. I would say my favorite was Offshore. I've read all of them and I really, really like her style and the characters that she presents. I have more Japanese literature here. Two novellas by Shusaku Endo. This is also about my Nobel Prize adventure. A very good novel. It's a little bit long historical novel. The center of the novel is, of course, the bridge. So you see how the bridge plays an important part in the lives of many people throughout history. 
Then you may have heard of Adolfo Yoy Casares. Here in the US he is known primarily as the friend of Jorge Luis Borges, but he is so much more than that. This is his novel Diary of the War of the Pig. It's about a war between the young and the elderly. He has some fantastic situations in his books. And um, if you're going to read something, if you want to try, you know, sample the work of Bioy Casares, you need to read his novella. The first one he wrote, The Invention of Morel. That is simply a fantastic text. Uh, Borges said it was perfect, so, you know, that tells you a little bit. Of course they were friends, but you know what I mean. It's, it's still a, a very, very... Um, it, it's an incredible novella. I have the complete works of Rimbaud here, the poetry. The good thing about this edition from the Modern Library is that it also has the text in French. So if you want to look at the original, you can do that. They had a separate volume for his letters, but I was not that interested in, in that aspect of his work. So I, I don't really have that, uh, that one. This version of the Odyssey, translated by Richmond Lattimore. This is the one that I read, and I liked it. I think, you know, the, the first half of the Odyssey, to, to my taste, right, in my opinion, is probably, you know, among the best of epic poetry that you can find. I did not l like the Iliad that much. Then, uh, oh, this, this one brings good memories here to the lighthouse. I remember skipping class when I was in college to go to the library and read this one. And I have to be completely honest with you, the first time that I read this book, it went completely over my head. I mean, completely. I, uh, I wanted to, to love it and everything, but I just did not understand it. It took a second reading many years later. I read it for the second time, and, and I was like, this book is just amazing. It's an amazing novel, but I needed that second reading, you know? So. Then the companion piece, and I know this is not fair to say this, but this is a companion piece to Jane Eyre. And it's so much more than that, but that's one of the many things that it is. A wonderful novel in and of itself, so I highly recommend that. I've read some books by Philip K. Dick, and uh, I liked, of course, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. This was probably my second favorite. Ubik was another good one. The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldridge, that's another one that I read by him. Um, the Simulacra, I did not like that one. So, just some, you know, a few books that I, that I read along the years by Philip K. Dick. This also uh, responds to my interest in Nobel Prize winners. I did not read, this brings, this uh, contains the first novels of the cycle of the dawn. So th there's another part to it that I have not read. And if I ever read that one, I will probably need to reread this one because I don't really remember that much. I remember being absorbed by it, but that's about it. I do need to read this one. So many people say this is Hemingway's masterpiece. So it's there in my future. This was one of the first works of serious literature that I read. I was like right out of high school. I mean serious literature by myself, right, without being forced uh, to read it. And it has some of uh, Sartre's short stories, maybe maybe all of his short stories? Let me see. So those are the, the contents that you can see right there. If the camera decides... yeah, there we go. Very, very good stories. I also read Nausea later on in Spanish. This one I thought was one of the best realist novels ever. I did not have the same luck with The Magic Mountain, but that was probably my fault. You know, the Nobel Prize uh, Committee rarely mentions one work when they give the Nobel Prize to an author, but for Thomas Mann, uh, he was one of the exceptions. They actually mentioned this one, which he wrote when he was extremely young. It was first published in the year 1900, and uh, Thomas Mann was born in 18... 75 so he was 24 25 when he uh, wrote it so that that's that's pretty amazing then you may have heard of the argentine author ernesto sabato the tunnel on heroes and tombs the exterminating angel i think they translated his, his third novel by that title into english and towards um you know the the end of his life he put together a collection of short stories that he had loved and this is volume number one of them. There were many stories that I found out through these books that Salato 
put together. And you can see some of the, the contents here. So he has, um, I'm, I'm translating the, the titles here, Before the Law by, by Kafka, I, I think I remember that was the title, The Overcoat by Gogol, and some Alphonse Daudet, Horacio Quiroga, a great author from Uruguay who lived in Argentina, The Bottle Imp by Stevenson, that has got to be one of my favorite stories ever, Jack London, Catherine Mansfield, Borges, of course, The Happy Prince by uh, Oscar Wilde, a short story not, not very well known by Heinrich Böll that I really liked, The Balik uh, Scales, I think was the title in English, I'm not sure, Roberto Arlt, another uh, Argentinian author, very important uh, in our, you know, in the history of our literature. Then a story by Yves um, Hugo Mujica is another Argentinian author, and the story that you can see here is a, uh, was not had not been published before. And of course, White Nights by uh, Dostoevsky, also another favorite novella of mine. Let me just move this over there. Alice Munro, she is one of my uh, absolute, you know, uh, she. I don't know, her stories are simply amazing to me. I love her work. I have read not all of her books, but many of them, and I enjoyed them so much. Every time I open a book by her, it's, it's just amazing. You know, realism, compassionate realism. That's great. Uh, I really, really enjoy that. Then, uh, this is also part of my Nobel Prize reading adventure. Let's see if the camera focuses or not. So The Maid Celia by Celan Pe. And the subtitle of this is The History of the Last Offshoot of an Old Family Tree. So you have one of those good old uh, land novels, what we call in Spanish Novela de la Tierra, which is, um, you know, the novel about the, the land and the people and, you know, that type of, that type of theme. This is Le Calvaire by Octave Mirbeau. And my books are falling. So the first part of his autobiographical trilogy of, of novels, the second one is, um, let's see if I remember, La Belle Jules is the second part, and then Sebastien Roche is the last one. This is the only one that I've read, but I've, only, uh, I've also read, of course, The uh, Torture Garden, The Diary of a Chambermaid. I have quite a few books by Mirbeau. At one point I became interested in his work and decided to get a few books by him. Um, and to start reading them, but then I stopped at, at one point, so I need to get back to that. Kaddish by uh, Imre Kertes. This little novella by Garcia Marquez, Memoria de mis putas tristes. Not his best work, but, you know, I read every work of fiction by Garcia Marquez. I took a class on him, and when the semester ended, I realized that we had read basically all of his works, except for two or three, and I thought, well, I might as well just go and get them, you know, and, and read them. This is pending reading for me. Um, a classic of environmentalist literature. I took a class also in college, the history of environmental thought in the US, and this was part of the reading list, but I still haven't gotten to it. And then this great uh, poetic novel, Soul Mountain by Gao Xingjian. Also, I read it because of uh, the Nobel Prize that he won, but um, one of the things that, I, that I'm happy about is that um, that desire to read at least one work by every winner of the Nobel Prize led me to many good things and many authors that I would not or that I might not have explored otherwise if they had not been Nobel laureates. So um, that is something that I, you know, that I'm thankful for. This is a book that not many people have heard of outside of Argentina. And uh, I guess the simplistic way to describe it would be as an Argentine Ulysses. It's so much more than that, and it's unfair to call it that, but that gives you an idea. As you know, Ulysses ex inspired a lot of books, a lot of novels, and this just happens to be another one of them. This that I have right here is... Um, no, not really, it says Obras Completas. It, it's not really an Obras Completas, or maybe it was an Obras Completas when it was published, but the author, Manuel Rojas, published more books after this one. Manuel Rojas was a Chilean author who wrote, he's well known primarily for his uh, autobiographical novels. He has a tetralogy 
of autobiographical novels. And this book brings quite a few works by him uh, in different uh, genres. I don't know if, let's see if the camera focuses here properly, you can see. Um, this one has essays, poetry, short stories, and many of his novels also. His most famous novel is Hijo de Ladrón, so Thief's Son. It was published in 1951, and after that you have three novels that follow the same character. So they are a kind of, uh, you know, when you put them all together, they are a kind of Bildungsroman. And uh, so you have Thief's Son, Hijo de Ladrón, then the second part is Mejor que el Vino, or Better than Wine. It is also included in uh, this volume that I just showed you. And the next two, so number three and four, are not included in this book. Uh, I want to say the third one was titled Sombras contra el Muro, and the last one was La Oscura Vida Radiante. And the last one is from 1971. So you have two decades there of autobiographical novels. This, of course, is going to all fall uh, down. Um, this um, collected poems and plays of Rabindranath Tagore, and it's not complete, it's only a collection, and even the books that are included here, the volumes, like for instance, Jitanjali, Song Offering, you don't really have the complete book in this uh, edition. It's just a collection, but it also has some very well-known plays like uh, The Crescent Moon and The Post Office. Those are the ones that I know. I also have a volume of his works in Spanish that sort of completes this one that um, that I bought many years ago. I do need to read the diaries of Franz Kafka. I haven't read that, so I read, I think, yeah, this is the only the only book by Kafka that I still need to read. I have a translation of the Satyricon here, even though this is not the one that I read. One day I bought two different translations of the Satyricon for some reason and I never got the chance to compare them because I still need to read that one and another example of my uh, Nobel Prize obsession on each uh, by Leclesio. It was a, a good work. It's a, it's a novel that is in dialogue with Conrad's Heart of Darkness, that type of uh, topic. I don't read a lot of noir or a lot of mystery but I really love Chandler. One summer, I want to say maybe 12 years ago, I uh, started to read all of his novels and I just couldn't stop. He is, um, I think, the best example to me, right, of that type of novel. I don't really like Hammett that much. Even though I've read a few works by him, he's not really, you know, for some reason, I, I don't really, couldn't tell you why, but I love Chandler. But Hammett, that's, that's another story. I do like James M. Cain. Horace McCoy, all of those. This uh, novel, The Reader, is one of those novels that you read, and, and this is completely personal, of course, but I read this and I was like, wow, this is the kind of book that I would like to write. It normally happens to me, though, most of the time when I feel like that, it's with a Japanese novel. But with this one, it was that kind of feeling when I was done reading it. The Trial, of course. Oh, this is good. This is, Jose Agustin is a Mexican, uh, primarily a novelist. And at least in this one, Se está haciendo tarde, final en laguna. If I had to describe this, and of course this is simplistic, right? I would say this is a type of a Mexican on the road. You know, on the road by Jack Kerouac. This is sort of in a similar vein to the beat generation. And um, that type of writing, that type of story. Uh, then I have Dr. Shivago, and, um, well, um, well, actually, let, let's not talk about Dr. Shivago, because, yeah, let, let's leave this for another, for another moment. I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, move on to the next. Carson McCullers, an author that I, uh, that gives me a lot of pleasure. I love Southern Gothic literature, and this, I think, was one of the novels that I enjoyed the most reading. It's a novella, maybe. I would have to read it again to see if it's a novel or a novella. It's a short novel, I can tell you that. But whether it's an actual novella when it comes to the structure, I would really need to um, look at it again. And I have... 
This is deja vu here. I have another copy of Reflections in a Golden Eye. I have no idea why, but <laughs> I have another copy here. If somebody, you know, if I ever need to make a present to somebody, I guess I could give them. Or if I want somebody to borrow this book and I don't want to lose it, that would be a very good way to go about that. Condit by Voltaire in this very nice edition. These are the Penguin Classics Deluxe. I don't know if they're, they probably sell them still. I have this one, I have Rashomon by Akutagawa, and probably another of these, but I don't really remember. El Enigma y el Espejo by Justin Goddard. I don't know what the, the title of this, this, this is the Christmas story, and let's see if I can tell by the original title what the, uh, I don't really know what the title in English is. I would have to, to look it up, but um, I have a few books by Goddard. And the first one, which I'm going to show you in a second, was, um, of course, the um, El Mundo de Sofía, Sophie's World, which my mother gave me when I, was a, when, when I was a teenager. And at that point, I started to read it. And let me show it to you now, since we're here. I started to read it, and it was probably too much for me at that age. I needed to wait a little bit longer to be more mature for it. I finally read it two years ago, and uh, I loved it. And I did read the one, the one that I showed you before, El Enigma y el Espejo. I enjoyed that one as a teenager, but this one was a little bit too much for me at that time. But I think it's a great story. Then I have... This is one of the best books I've read on the topic of meditation. Thomas Merton is a fantastic author and uh, it's very difficult to write about spiritual things, about meditation, but he manages to convey the message in, in a way that you understand it, right? This is um, the perspective or the approach is of course Christian, Catholic, but it applies to many other faiths. I think he was in, in many of his books, he was more interfaith. As you may know, he was interested in Chuang Tzu and in Taoism. So, you know, I really recommend this one if you're interested in meditation and uh, silent prayer. Like many people who read Ulysses, I needed a guide. And this is the classic guide, the new Bloomsday book. So, um, this really helped me to make the most of my first experience of reading Ulysses back when I was, I want to say, let's see, 19. So, if I understood anything at that point, it was mostly thanks to this book. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but you know what I'm saying. Then, as you can see, this is a completely honest shelf tour, because I am showing you here Cliff Notes for Garcia Marquez, 100 Years of Solitude. Why I thought that I needed Cliff Notes on this book by Garcia Marquez, I have no idea. I, I can promise you I've read 100 Years of Solitude from the first word to the last, and I probably reread about half of it later on for a class. But I have no idea what this is doing here, but you know, uh, just being honest and showing you what I have. And then finally, this El Misterio del Solitario another book by Gardner that I started reading back when I was a teenager, but I, it's still pending, so I'm going to read it one of these days. Um, this is a, it's, It has like stories within stories. It's very interesting in its structure, but once again, at that point, as a teenager, I was not a very sophisticated reader. Some people are very sophisticated readers when they're teenagers. I was not. I had to educate myself, and it took years and years and years, even to be where I am right now, which is nowhere near where I want to be as a reader. Um, but, you know, I'll start reading it again one of these days, and uh, I'll see what happens and how I like it. I really enjoyed Sophie's World. So, it looks like that's the end of the tour. As you can see, that's all I have in this bookshelf. So, uh, if you stayed with me this long, thank you so much for your patience, and I hope that you liked this little tour through one of my many bookshelves here. So that's it, my friends. Uh, bookshelf tour, one of my bookshelves. Does it represent me as a reader? 
yes, uh, no, sort of. There are many other interests that I don't see in that bookshelf, but I can share with you other bookshelves in the future, only if you're interested, of course. I would love to hear your ideas. Uh, if you have any of the books that you saw here, or you know, if you want to add your comments and your impressions on the bookshelf tour, you know that is always welcome. And if you're interested in seeing other books that I have or in hearing a little bit more about one of the books that I showed that maybe I didn't say so much about, just let me know and I'll be happy to do that. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day.